Welcome to Money in the Market. I'm Hong Bin Jung. Singapore's property sector has remained buoyant even as countries elsewhere face slowdowns due to soaring interest rates and inflation. Home sales reached a five month high in February, though, as demand returned after a dwindling supply slowed transactions late last year. Still, rising home prices and rents have taken a toll on some residents. But is the rental growth close to peaking? Can we expect Expect a slowdown soon, or will there be more pain for tenants? Well, joining me in the studio today is Audrey Seek, who's a show host and producer at Oh My Home. Hi, Audrey. Welcome back to the studio. Lovely seeing you again. Hong Ben, it's always it's so good to be back. Thank you for keeping Oh My Home in mind, and what a warm welcome with all of those really <laughs> intense questions. <laughs> okay, but you know, before we get started, yeah. With what's happening in the property market. To kick things off, just wanted to say congratulations. That's right. Well, As of just two days ago, Oh My Home is now a publicly listed company on the New York NASDAQ. That's right. Thank you so much. Yeah, uh, Oh My Home is now listed mm-hmm. on the NASDAQ. We can't believe it. We have been trading publicly, I think you said, mm-hmm. for like two days now. Uh, ticker is OMH. Mm. Um, oh My Home. Just had the honor of actually ringing the closing bell at the Ooh, NASDAQ okay. earlier this morning. Half of our team is still in New York, and they were there to celebrate this momentous occasion. And, of course, the team here in Singapore, we are so happy to be able to support them from afar and mm-hmm. also to, you know, wake up early to watch it. Um, oh, my home is so proud of this achievement. Mm-hmm. Um, we're the first Singaporean company to yep. be listed uh, in the U.S. this year, and also the only women only Whoa. founded prop tech company listed in the US. Okay, that's so, a big deal. Yeah, we're all extremely excited. Of course, you know, we're so proud to be recognized and publicized in such a global stage, but ultimately um, what we look forward to the most is mm-hmm. to be able to serve more customers. And hopefully, you know, this IPO can really get everybody uh, to see and understand the company for mm-hmm. what it stands for, um, which is to be the most comprehensive and trusted property solution for everyone. So this is just the beginning of Oh My Home and the beginning the beginning for so many things to come mm-hmm. in the future. So lots more to come. You better keep your eyes peeled on what we have in store. I shall keep my eyes peeled mm-hmm. for more news from you guys. But okay, from the last time we talked, Oh, yeah. About property. It was a very uplifting discussion. (laughs) (laughs) Was there any change in the property market since then? How would you describe the overall property market as of right now? Mm, uh, First of all, I can't believe how much time has passed. When I I came, it was the start of Q1, right? And now it's we're already entering Q2 soon. Unbelievable. Where where does time (laughs) go? We kicked up the new year with you. Exactly. But yeah, last time we spoke, I remember distinctively Mm -hmm. that your main question was whether our property market would continue to stay resilient. And you know what? After three (laughs) months, I have to say, things kind of (laughs) held up, right? Mm -hmm. Um, Oh My Home really has been keeping track of all of the news Mm -hmm. updates, and uh, cooling measures were already in place last time we spoke, Mm -hmm. I believe, and uh, interest rates were already pretty high then. And now, even with higher interest rates and the increase in buyer stamp duties Mm -hmm. after Budget 2023, I know we're going to talk about that a little bit later, but uh, the market really still is Mm -hmm. going pretty strong. So some updates for you. Just very quickly, uh, new launches are selling like hotcakes. Mm. Everyone's getting a new launch. Um, Private home sales are generally Generally, you know, still going up Mm -hmm. despite the new rules to buyer stamp duties. And I'm sure we'll talk about that. We did see a really small dip in private home prices Mm -hmm. in January uh, or February, but that's really nothing to write home about. And since then, we've actually had a nice rebound there. So (laughs) um, rentals, you know, uh, rising still, but at a slower pace. And analysts Mm -hmm. are pointing to some signs of softening there. All in all, have things changed? Not really, (laughs) but not yet, at least. But it does seem like things have calmed down a little bit from the last time we spoke. Okay, okay. But, you know, recent data, it's shown that home sales here in Singapore have reached a five-month high. Yeah. <laughs> what, what is fueling this demand? So actually, what you're referring to here is specifically mm-hmm. our private home sales okay. going up. Um, and this was since a 14-year low mm-hmm. in December. So that was actually very atypical, and that was mainly caused... Uh, 
because of the lack of new launches in that period. Okay. So this is very, this is not consistent and not mm-hmm. what we expected to happen really. But in February, when we saw more popular mm-hmm. projects now enter the market, uh, of course, you know, with new launches being so popular here in Singapore, it really picked back up pretty quickly. Uh, the popular Terra Hill, that was a big new launch in February, really led the charge. Uh, more units were also being released um, from ongoing projects. Mm-hmm. And so uh, that we really saw a nice pickup from that temporary mm-hmm. slump. Um, but overall, you know, we've seen a large growth in unit sales through, throughout Singapore, mm. all across the region since the dip. Uh, lots to look forward to if you are in the market for new launches. Okay. Not sure if you're looking to buy Hongbin, <laughs> you know, but um, Timbusu Grand's preview starts tomorrow, okay. as well as the Continuum, which is next week. And the funny thing is that both of them are in the exact same area. Oh. They're both in the very popular Katong area, mm-hmm. and they're launching just a week apart from each other. Okay. And Oh My Home thinks that, you know, these projects are going to be really popular. Mm. So remember, you know, if you need any help with looking for a new launch, you can always call us. I see. I see. Okay. But, you know, you've talked about how Singapore's property has remained resilient so far. Mm -hmm. So how has Singapore's property sector held up so well amid this global slump? Oh, my God. This is such a big question. Well, I think... There have been a couple of, of, of big things that have happened, but I can mm. I really can't speak to what the Singapore government has been trying to do to manage this. Okay. So uh, I did mention about the uh, the budget 2023 mm-hmm. and all of the changes that has happened there. Mm. If you don't mind, I'll just go through some of the key okay. changes that has happened. Uh, so three things, really. Mm-hmm. Uh, I did mention the big change to buyer stamp duties mm-hmm. that we've talked about, uh, which really affects higher-end properties, okay. uh, which specifically properties that are valued at over $1.5 mm-hmm. million. So that just means the more expensive your mm. the property that you want to buy is, the more taxes right. you're willing to pay, right? But so far, this does not seem to have had much of an effect mm-hmm. on sales. Uh, it hasn't shown to be effective at all in deterring okay. private property buyers. Mm-hmm. Um, the second change really is the BTO extra ballot. Mm-hmm. Uh, so if you have kids and you're, you're, sing- you're a Singaporean couple, younger than 40, Mm-hmm. or you have kids already, uh, and you're balloting for a BTO for the first time, uh, you now get an extra chance mm. to uh, get a queue number for your right. BTO. So uh, you have three chances now, up from two before, mm. and the government hopes that this would help these families get a home quicker uh, than before. And But so far, it's still a little bit too early to talk about whether this is going to impact a lot of change. And not the last change from the... Uh, budget 2023 is the increase in CPF housing grants. Mm -hmm. So uh, first-timer families looking to buy resale HDB flats now can get Mm $30,000 more up from $50,000, so grand total of Mm -hmm. $80,000 to help you purchase your first resale HDB flat. Uh, Also, as part of efforts to make resale homes a little bit more affordable. Mm -hmm. So, so far uh, all these changes clearly are meant to target families, local families here, uh, in particular during this time. Yeah. But you know, still rising home prices and rents, they've taken a toll on residents, right? Are, yeah. are many Singaporeans still considering delaying buying a property until prices stabilize? Or what is the current sentiment around property buyers? Mm, so uh, so at Oh My Home, we actually, we've thought about this a lot. And we found that um, this delay really only happens if buyers have the option to wait. Mm. So for those buying because they need to buy a home, mm-hmm. they are looking to get a bigger house or they're looking, uh, they, they really need a home to live in right now yeah. for their own stay, then delaying really isn't much of an mm-hmm. option, right? They're going to have to yeah. buy anyway. Um, there's always the alternative of renting, I suppose, mm-hmm. but I think a lot of locals consider that to be the worst option. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, rent prices are so high. <laughs> right. So uh, at least now there's a bit more support, like I mentioned, for local families to yeah. buy homes. Um, but for I think to your question, for the home sellers who are looking to sell mm-hmm. and then buy a new place, mm-hmm. um, they're the ones in a really difficult position, I okay. think, um, because even if they do sell high, mm-hmm. they're also going to have buy. to buy high. And so if you're trying to you know, make a profit and cash out here, uh, Oh My Home can understand why there are so many people in this camp who would rather you know, wait it out and see how it goes. Okay, yeah. okay. And I mean, you talked about some of the terms that was in 
announced during the budget mm. uh, and other cooling measures. How is that helping the property market so far? Yeah, it's actually a little hard to uh, say right now. Mm-hmm. Um, to the effect of the higher uh buyer stamp mm-hmm. duties. Um, so far, like I said, that hasn't really changed at all okay. in terms of deterring um, these luxury home buyers mm-hmm. to buy like a nice house, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, if you think about it in terms of percentage, um, they're maybe going to be paying thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 more, which in terms of how much the entire property costs in general, mm-hmm. that's not enough for them to be like, you know what, I'm not going to buy this property because the um, buyer stamp duty is a little bit higher. Okay. But to the other two changes, which is the extra ballot mm-hmm. BTO, as well as the increase in CPF housing grants, mm-hmm. those are way too early to tell now. But if you keep your eyes peeled to own my home, we'll definitely keep an eye on the market to see if you know there's any effect there. I yeah. see. I see. Okay. And of course, talking about my favorite topic here, the rental market. Oh my God, it's also my favorite, but also my least favorite topic. So Singapore (laughs) recently pushed New York off the top spot for the strongest growth in residential rents in the last quarter of 2022. Yes, yes, yes. And this is according to the latest report by Knight Frank. And it's beating New York. That's pretty significant, right? You seem to be very happy about this. I am not happy. (laughs) Okay, so it's the funny story is that I used to live in New York mm-hmm. and I had to rent there. And I remember thinking, oh, this is just the reality mm. of living in New York, you know. And now I'm renting here. So, <laughs> like, clearly I can't catch a break. But, um, yeah, I think looking to your particular question about the growth in rents, mm-hmm. right? So Singapore saw a really big jump in rental prices, I would say, towards the uh, the second half mm-hmm. of last year, 2022. Um, and there are a couple of things that caused this spike, right? We know that um, there were there was an increased demand for mm-hmm. these rental units be- because expats were finally coming back after COVID, mm-hmm. and we have more young Singaporeans needing the space right. and looking for places to live while maybe waiting for a more permanent housing mm-hmm. arrangement. Um, so looking at that situation now... It seems like, I don't know if you've been following, but some ex- expats have left Singapore because they've just okay. been paying too much in rent and they can't yeah. afford to live here mm-hmm. anymore. And we're really already on the tail ends of the issues of the BTO delays mm-hmm. and the supply crunch. So um, we think that it should get a little bit better. I will talk about this okay. um, a little bit later. But in terms of the comparison to New York, we're talking about like a, sig- a substantial growth in rent. Mm-hmm. But if if you were to ask me, is it now more expensive to live in Singapore than mm-hmm. it is in Manhattan? I don't think that that's true. It's uh-huh. still a little bit cheaper to live here, okay. but still, I get it. That it's mm. it's the jump in the in prices that really scare people. I think, yeah. Okay, okay, but you know, with rents surging, how are Singaporeans or those residing here in Singapore? How are <laughs> they coping? You know, what areas? How are you coping? <laughs> what, what areas are you thinking of moving to, Hongbin? <laughs> I don't know, but what areas are they moving to? <laughs> yeah, that's a great. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great question. Um, I, I follow, you know, I, I mean, I go on TikTok. Uh, on my yeah. home, we really do try to follow, mm-hmm. like, all of the trends. And we've recently seen a lot of these videos of people posting, like, these short reels of, like, oh, look, there's an expat here in Pasir Ris. Like, what are they doing here? Oh, like, no. so you're you're, <gasps> see, okay. you're seeing expats, you know, pop up where they've never been seen before. Oh, my yeah. So uh, definitely I think more people are looking at uh, mm-hmm. moving to the outskirts. Okay. Um, I myself, you know, I my my lease is coming up soon, oh, so no. <laughs> uh, I am uh, in the market for a, a new home, mm-hmm. and uh, I've come to find that after you know looking following the trends mm-hmm. and and really looking closely at oh my homes listings, um, I found that you really do have to be open minded when it comes to right. looking for a new place mm-hmm. to stay. You know, are, are you in the market for a new rental? Um, place? I actually recently renewed my contract, so ah, okay. I still have that time. But hopefully by year's end, um, rental prices will come down. And speaking of that, <laughs> while you know rents have surged over the past three years mm-hmm. as the rental market boomed, yeah. some property 
property analysts, they're now saying that rental growth may be close to peaking and should slow down towards the second half of this year and into 2024, which is very good news for me. Yes, what do yeah. you think? Are, are you guys at Oh My Home expecting the same thing? Is yeah. it the end of pain <laughs> for tenants? What is happening? Okay. Oh, uh, first of all, Hongbin, I said Oh My Home, we always believe that it, it's never wrong to hope. Mm-hmm. Okay, so let's always hope for the best. Okay. Uh, but uh, when it comes to uh, talking about like bringing down rental prices, mm-hmm. um, truth be told, um, we hardly ever see a huge drop in rental prices. Okay. I don't know if you if you notice this. Mm-hmm. It does take some time right. to see a big change. And that's because, so uh, just a personal question. Mm-hmm. When you signed your lease, do mm-hmm. you sign one year, two years? I signed one year because it was it was a big jump. From, okay. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. actually one year is good. And, and, and two years, I would say, is the standard. Mm-hmm. And because, let's just say that I just signed it, right? Mm-hmm. And this is the rent that I'm paying for the next two years. You have to wait for that lease to run out before right. uh, a new a new figure a, mm-hmm. n- a new rental price steps in mm-hmm. so it's because of that that we won't see like a sudden like drop in prices mm-hmm. but on top of that i think that you know i mentioned that the supply crunch that we've seen last mm-hmm. year as well as the delayed btos those are those problems are near solved mm-hmm. i would say so that should bring down prices we're definitely you know hoping that it will bring down prices but um don't forget that interest rates are still mm-hmm. um that's a huge factor right. uh, on the rents that landlords would want to charge because mm-hmm. now they're paying um, a higher mortgage right. and, you know, they would rather you, Hong than the tenant, <laughs> pay for it, right? Right. So, uh, so I would have to say, and also yesterday, actually, I believe that the Fed's raised interest rates again by 25 yep. basis points. Yes, so um, with that and inflation, you know, still unlikely to drop mm-hmm. um, to a healthier 2% range. Mm-hmm. Here's to hoping that we'll see a, a big change. But um, as of now, just hang in there, Hongbin. I'm hanging there with you, okay? <laughs> okay, well, thank you so much, Audrey. I hope the next time we speak, we'll be talking about how rental prices have eased. Oh, okay. But bef- <laughs> even if that doesn't happen, please feel free to call me and own my home back okay <laughs> i shall i shall well thank you so much audrey for joining me today thank you hongman money fm 89.3